When stars die, they become one of three things, a white dwarf, neutron star, or black hole. But before this happens, there's an in-between phase in the last days of a star's life. Before they die, certain types of stars rapidly expand, becoming red giants. These red giants are the largest type of star in the universe, and they don't last very long. They can balloon up to sizes so large that they dwarf entire solar systems. But even still, planets can still survive around these types of stars. In fact, we know of several of them. This is my third episode of the Halcyonic System series. If you haven't heard the name yet, a Halcyonic System is a term I use to describe any type of system orbiting around a dying or dead star, including red giants, black holes, white dwarfs, and neutron stars. Similarly, any planet inside a Halcyonic System is called a Halcyonic Planet. I've already made two other episodes about neutron stars and white dwarfs respectively, so be sure to check out those after you're done watching this one. With out of the way, how do planets even begin to survive the death of their own star? It really all boils down to how far away a planet is from the star when it becomes a red giant. The further away it is, the less likely it is to be engulfed by the expanding star. When our sun becomes a red giant in about 5 billion years, Mercury, Venus, and most likely Earth and the Moon will be destroyed, as the sun will grow bigger than their orbits. Everything past Mars, however, will likely survive the red giant phase entirely. As stars become red giants, they also lose mass, so planets in the death zone have the chance to move away from the star as its gravity decreases, saving them. But just because they avoid falling into the red giant, that doesn't mean they're going to survive. This is AC Hercules, a double star system over 4,200 light years away from Earth. AC Hercules A is about 60% the mass of the Sun, but has expanded just under 50 times its radius, and is also now about 2,500 times as luminous as the Sun. This makes it a characteristic red giant, and it probably doesn't have much time left before it sheds its outer layers and becomes a white dwarf. The whole system is also surrounded by a ring of dust, which potentially has a gap in it that could be caused by a planet. This planet candidate is AC Hercules B, and it's weird for several reasons. One of the strangest things about AC Hercules B is instead of orbiting around the equator of its stars like most planets do, the planet's on a polar orbit, meaning it orbits almost perpendicular to the star's equator. It's also circumbinary, meaning it orbits both of the two stars in the system at once. AC Hercules A is a very late stage red giant, already having passed the asymptotic giant branch, one of the last phases of being a red giant. The star will probably become a white dwarf sometime in the next 10,000 years, meaning we found this planet at an extremely rare time, right in between the billions of years the star was on the main sequence and the quadrillions of years it'll be a white dwarf for. When it does become a white dwarf, the fate of AC Hercules B is uncertain. It could very well be ejected from the system thanks to the chaos that will come with the star losing almost half of its mass, but since it's not even confirmed to exist yet, we don't really know. Much closer to us than AC Hercules is the red giant R. Leonis. It's a single star about 70% the mass of the sun, but about 300 times bigger in radius and 3,500 times as bright. The star also has a planet candidate at least two times as big as Jupiter on a five-year orbit. It orbits the star at about 2.7 AU, which would put it between Mars and Jupiter in our solar system. All in all, this makes our Leonis B fairly similar to Jupiter as far as exoplanets go, which is interesting because this planet is evaporating. Despite being over 2 AU away from its star, our Leonis B likely possesses a comet tail as material is stripped off the planet and into space by the intense heat and light from our Leonis. This is a great example of what our solar system will probably look like in the future, as once the sun becomes a red giant, it's likely that Jupiter will begin to resemble what our Leonis B looks like today, a hot, evaporating gas giant scorched by its expanding star. However, both AC Hercules A and our Leonis are relatively small mass-wise. Both are smaller than the sun in mass, despite being far bigger than the sun in radius. They're both pretty small as far as red giants go. What about truly gigantic red giants, like Betelgeuse and Antares? These stars are so big that they get their own class of red giant, red supergiant. Stars like this start out as massive O and B type stars, the biggest types of main sequence stars. So far, we really don't know if planets exist around these stars. First off, planets have a very hard time forming around O and B stars anyway. These stars are so hot, O stars in particular, that they tend to blow away their protoplanetary disks before they can form planets. Even if planets do manage to form here, they won't last very long, since these stars become red giants and explode in only tens of millions of years, not billions like smaller stars. So, the environments of red supergiants can go two ways. They can be extremely empty, with no planets or a protoplanetary disk to form them, or they can have truly titanic protoplanetary disks. The second option is particularly interesting, because the more massive a star is, the more massive its protoplanetary disk generally is. So, red supergiants small enough to not destroy their protoplanetary disk could have 20 or more planets in their systems. 
Of course, these plants will be hugely unstable, as they're still in the process of forming by the time their star is dying. These red giants form so quickly that planets haven't even had time to fully form and stabilize, so the environments of these young red supergiants could be extremely interesting. In the solar system, as our planets were forming, there are most likely far more rocky planets than dwarf planets across the system. Scale this up by a hundred for bigger stars. There could be dozens of young, rocky planets in these systems, and hundreds of dwarf planets. These places are, in my opinion, some of the most interesting stellar systems in the universe, and deserve their own video. But, with so many planets, several of them risk falling into the red giant as it expands. This is true for all red giant systems. What exactly happens to a planet when it enters a red giant? Surprisingly, when a planet enters a red giant, it can potentially last for thousands of years inside the star, as its orbit slowly decays and it spirals toward the core. This is because, despite being immensely big, red giants are not dense. The biggest red giants can have densities less than Earth's atmosphere, meaning anything that passes through red giants, including planets, will actually survive. Unless, of course, it enters the core, where things are much denser. Red giants could actually host planets inside them for a surprising amount of time. When planets enter a red giant, it's not a quick, immediate death. It's a slow process that takes tens of thousands of years, as the unrelenting heat of the red giant slowly vaporizes the planet until there's nothing left. In fact, if a planet is big enough, it can not only stay inside a red giant for thousands of years, but actually get out of the star when it gets smaller. This is Hala, a planet about 60% bigger than Jupiter that orbits a red giant called Baikdu, 520 light years from Earth. Baikdu is well into the phase of helium burning, meaning it's run out of hydrogen already blown past the first phase of being a red giant. Baikdu has since gotten smaller again, which is typical of red giants once they begin helium burning. But when it was at its biggest extent, it should have been 50% larger than Hala's orbit, which should have destroyed the planet. So, Hala shouldn't exist. It should have long since been eaten by its star. But the fact that it still does exist opens up the possibility that Hala survived inside its star for thousands of years, slowly losing mass, before the star shrunk and it was finally free. This remains unconfirmed, but it's also possible that Baikdu just didn't expand as far as it should have for some reason, or Hala migrated to its current position. Both of these options are unlikely, and it's a real possibility that Hala survived inside of its star. Unfortunately, most other planets won't be as lucky as Hala. Hala, being 60% larger than Jupiter, had enough mass to spare. But smaller planets like Mercury, Venus, and Earth don't have that luxury. When the Sun inevitably becomes a red giant, it will destroy Mercury and Venus, and most likely Earth and the Moon. All stars bigger than a red dwarf eventually become red giants, and all planets unlucky enough to form too close to it will be destroyed, no matter how long it takes. Red giants are the last phase of a star's life before the true death of the system. It's a very short transition period where planets are dying. But it's not all bad. The environments of red giants are some of the most unique places in the universe, and offer environments you can't get anywhere else. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about halcyonic systems, and my videos about space colonization.